What's going on everyone? Thank you so much for clicking on this video. Are you searching for a step through fat tire e-bike? If so, then you are in the right spot because today we're gonna to take a look at the all new 2022 Pathfinder from Be Cool Bikes. The Pathfinder is a 26 by four fat tire bike, comes in step through and step over versions, and it comes in two colors. You can get black or this blue green color that they call Aurora. The bike has hydraulic brakes, a 48 volt, 20 amp hour battery pack, 750 watt rear hub motor, suspension seat posts, rack, fenders, and turn signals all included in the purchase price. Now, full disclosure, this bike is here courtesy of Be Cool. I did not purchase the bike. They sent me this bike for the purpose of riding, testing, and putting some information out there for the e-bike community to use. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna go through the bike front to back, top to bottom, like we always do. And I'll show you what you get for your money. I'll put the current price on the screen. And hopefully by the end of this video, you'll have a good idea of what the Pathfinder is all about and if it might be a bike you wanna consider. So let's get going. All right, everyone, here's the 2022 Pathfinder from Be Cool Bikes. And this is the step through version. It also comes in a step over. And this is the Aurora color, also comes in black. Arrives at your house just like most e-bikes in a giant cardboard box. And there's a few things you gotta put together. So you gotta put on the front wheel, you gotta put on the front fender, attach the handlebars, put on the rear rack and spin on the pedals. So it's a matter of Turn in nine or 10 bolts and the setup is done. But let's start going through this bike and showing you everything up close so you can decide if it's one you wanna consider or not. Wheel and tire package, again, 26 by four fat tires. And these have a pretty aggressive tread. This is one of the most aggressive tread patterns that I have on any of the bikes I've got. Uh, pretty, pretty knobby tires. You know, I'm sure they roar down the road. At this point, I'm just kind of used to it. I didn't really notice that they were excessively loud, but yeah, they're gonna roar down the street a little bit. And you've got a quick release on the front wheel here. Recommended tire pressure is five to 15 PSI. You can also take it up to a max of 30. At least that's what it says on the tire. We spin around to this side, take a look at the brakes. So we've got hydraulic disc brakes, 180 millimeter disc brakes. There's no brand on the caliper or up here on the lever. So I'm not sure what brand of brakes these are, but I can tell you they work fantastic. I was really, really impressed with the braking performance on this bike. You can get yourself to a stop in a hurry and you can skid the tire anytime you want. So very pleased with the braking performance on this bike. You do have a front suspension fork as well, preload and lockout adjustments. And uh, this side's, it's not just the on off style. There's actually multiple levels of adjustment here on this side. Pathfinder comes with fenders included, both front and rear. They're plastic fenders. They wrap pretty far around the tires. So should protect from a fair amount of splash. These are the same fenders that most of these fat tire bikes use. Now for the lighting on this bike, you've got headlight attached to the top of the fork here, and it's a headlight and horn built into the same unit up there. And then at the back of the bike, you've got a tail light, a brake light, and turn signals all built right into this unit here. Now I'll try to throw up a good video of this when it's a little bit darker out so you can see exactly how it functions. But the tail light lights, I think the top, the brake light lights the bottom, and then the turn signals are really cool. They're kind of like a sequential turn signal. So they, as they blink, they get closer to the edge. It's really kind of neat. But let's take a walk back up to the front of the bike here. We'll talk about the handlebars a little bit. Now they, they come up pretty tall. This is non-adjustable. However, Be Cool does sell on their website an adjustable handlebar stem. So if you want to look into getting that, you could make some changes here if you wanted to. Now the seating position on this bike was very, very comfortable for me. I like to be very tall and upright when I ride. So that's the feeling I got riding this bike. So I wouldn't be making any changes to this part of the handlebars myself. Now the handlebars are 28 inches wide end to end. That's pretty wide. I don't think I'd go any wider than that. And let's take a look at everything that's clipped on here. So we got these leather wrapped grips with the kind of the palm rest on it, a twist throttle, fantastic. I love the twist. So twist throttle on this bike, the seven speed shifter here. Uh, we'll skip over display for a second. And then here's your other controls for turn signals, horn. Actually, let's turn everything on so we can hear it and see it. Be cool bikes, always be cool. It's a really neat display actually. But here's your turn signals. I'll turn them on and I don't know if we can see it in the daylight or not, but there you go. One of the only bikes I know of that actually comes with turn signals from the factory. You gotta cancel it yourself. And then horn, um, built right into the headlight, like I said, so convenient horn there for you. And then your you know, mode and up and down for pedal assist buttons over here. The power button is on the top, it's the orange one up here. Now, let me get a good shot of the display for you, hopefully. And I've still got the protective film on here. Let me take that off. All right, there you go. Color display, very cool. I like this one a lot. It's 
one of the best ones I've seen. There's a lot of information in this screen though. There's a lot going on. Now this display gives you about everything. Time of day, battery voltage, speed, battery life, odometer, pedal assist, it's all happening in here. Most people are probably just gonna focus on speed, the pedal assist number, and maybe the battery meter, which is this side over here. The other side is like a power meter that goes up as you, you know, give the bike more power. And as you change through the pedal assist, the colors change as well. So one is like a green, and then you move to yellow, and orange, and red, and purple. So I guess you could kind of glance down, instead of looking at the number, look at the color and remember what pedal assist you're in. That's kind of neat. It's, very, it's the most colorful display I think I've ever seen on a bike. And then if you toggle using the mode key um, to the next thing, it'll show you watts. So when you twist the throttle, it'll show you a watt output. And I think that the most I ever saw it go up to was just over 900 watts. I think it was like 930 or something like that. According to this display screen, that's what your watt output is, like 900-ish. It was pretty steady around that. 890 900 mark when you're giving it full power but definitely a very cool and high-end looking display on the pathfinder i'm a big fan of that display let's talk about battery pack so the battery pack is inside the frame here it's integrated in and it slides out the front i can put up a video of me taking the battery in and out but there's a key slot on the other side you got to turn this little lever and the battery will drop out so it is removable and if you don't want to remove it and just charge it in the bike you're charging port is right here i believe they give you a three amp fast charger and again this is a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery pack which is huge the battery that was on the be cool explorer bike i tested was i think a 21 amp hour so just a smidge more and i got that bike to go 40 miles without pedaling it so you're gonna have some very good range out of this one i bet as well all right, next let's talk about the frame on this bike. This is a super interesting looking frame on the Pathfinder and it is heavy. That's one thing I really need to stress to you about this bike. This bike weighs 85 pounds. It is very heavy. Most of the 26 by four fat tire bikes I've ridden, I've been in the 72, 73 pound range. This one's 85 and you feel it. It's, it's certainly a very heavy bike. So keep that in mind. All right, now I'm not sure how to describe this frame to you. So I'm just gonna hold the camera steady here for a second so you can get a really good look at everything going on right here. You know, when I first pulled this bike out of the box, I, I was like, wait a minute, is this a mid-drive? It almost looks like this should be housing a, a mid-drive motor in there. But it's got a look at me mechanical, industrial, I don't like the words are escaping me. It, I mean, it looks like this was built strictly for purpose and strength and not beauty because <laughs> there's i mean there's a lot of crisscrossing weld lines and a lot of stuff going on here so it's, it's probably gonna people are either gonna really like it and be like yeah that looks tough and strong and other people are gonna be like i hate that it's there's too much going on so i don't know I, I don't mind it i mean to me it looks like i said it looks tough i'm on that category i guess and then you've got like almost this motorcycle swing arm that comes back there's no triangle you know no, normally there's a bar that comes from the bottom bracket back and then another one that angles up here toward the seat. And this just has one bar that comes back to the axle. So very unique, never seen a bike like that before. All the wiring is exposed right here, all the way back to the axle. I kind of wish they would hide this inside the frame. Um, these are, they've got these tie points here where they're just zip tied onto the frame and they're on the outside of it. So let me move the pedal back. When I was pedaling, my heel was actually kind of clipping this here. So I'm gonna have to release these and then maybe get them you know, underneath this frame rail a little bit better. That way I don't clip it with the back of my heel. I would hate to unplug my motor as I'm going. So it'd be cool if they could put these inside the frame or a little bit further underneath the frame to keep it out of the way of your, you know, your pedaling. Now, if we take a look at the front chainring, double-sided aluminum chainring, 48 tooth in the front. And then back here, you've got the Shimano Torni derailleur and it's a 1428, which for me was a good setup. I never lost feeling in the pedals. There was no ghost pedaling on this bike at all. Pathfinder comes with this rear rack included. It bolts right here and here, same on the other side. So just four bolts and you got the rack on. It's six inches wide and 18 and a half inches long. So it's a pretty big rack. And for the seat, they use the same one that's on the Explorer bike from Be Cool. It's uh, pretty thick, plush, got springs in the back, so very comfy. And then the Pathfinder, they actually give you a suspension seat post with the bike too. So, you know, the Explorer has the rear suspension. This bike doesn't have a rear suspension, but the seat post definitely did take the sting out of the bumps pretty good. And it is an adjustable suspension post as well. So 
you can you know take the seat post out and then look in the end of it you'll see where you can put an allen key in there and twist it and make it softer or stiffer and powering this bike you've got a 750 watt rear hub motor and this felt identical to the b explorer bike that i rode same exact motor as far as i know and it definitely felt like the same power so i guess we can talk a little bit about the performance of the pathfinder i went out and did my typical tests throttle only top speed i was able to get the bike to go i think it was somewhere around 26 miles an hour uh, using just the throttle no pedaling if you add in pedaling i think i got it up to maybe 28 29 ish miles an hour it's kind of hard to pedal this bike any faster than that it is very heavy now in the hill climb test this bike had no trouble climbing the hill throttle only you know I, I use the same hill for every single bike i test and i have it marked on the road where to stop and finish and i time it so i have an accurate picture of which one's actually going up the hill the quickest this one was just like the b explorer bike i mean they felt identical they they weren't the fastest up the hill they weren't the slowest up the hill they're right in the middle of the pack i think i mean the fastest one i ever did was like 22 seconds maybe i think this was maybe like 26 or so so plenty of power to climb the hills if you've got super super ridiculously steep hills yeah you're gonna have to help the bike and pedal but i, I was not i did not think the power on this bike was lacking at all now the power delivery on this bike is very gradual it's never jarring or jolting when the pedal assist kicks in or when your throttle kicks in. It never feels like it's gonna put you off balance. It's very gentle takeoff on the bike, makes it feel very smooth. Um, you can let go of the handlebars and pedal and allow the motor to kick in and out. It's not gonna you know, wreck you or pull you to one side. Kicks in very easy. It was great for riding it off-road. I mean, the tires had pretty amazing grip. Those are some pretty knobby tires on this bike. So. I did enjoy my trail ride that I took on the bike on very briefly. And that's, you know, the way the power kicks in is great for when you're maneuvering on trails like that and you're on slippery leaves. You don't want the bike putting you off balance. So I think this would be a great bike for that. I mean, the only concern I guess would be the weight off road. If you ever had to pick this thing up over a tree or something, that might be a problem. But as far as the power delivery, I, I really like the way the Be Cool bikes are set up. All right, everybody, I hope I was able to give you some good info today on the Pathfinder bike from Be Cool. And if there was something I missed, put it in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it if I can. Thank you so much to Be Cool for putting this bike in my hands so I could ride and test and put some information out to everyone, share my riding experience, much appreciated. I hope you found it informative, helpful, maybe at least entertaining if you did hit subscribe. And go check out the Be Cool website. They've been coming out with some really cool, unique looking bikes for 2022. The Pathfinder, the Rambler, the Challenger. So go check those out. You might just find a cool bike that fits you. So I'll link their website below. Go stop by and check out all their offerings. And I think that's all for today. So thank you so much for watching.